And uh, just so that uh, everyone knows, I'm uh, from the FDA. Um, just from the, uh, thank you so much for having me this morning. And thank you for spending uh, uh, time on a Saturday morning uh, listening to this. I really appreciate it. Um, I'm gonna try to take you through some of the high level regulations, high level things of what we're trying to do because I uh, appreciate what was just, just said uh, about, just uh, uh, about the issue of, um, uh, uh, of this being somewhat burdensome. Uh, are you hearing me okay? Yes, we're hearing you just fine. We hear you real okay. good. Okay, great. Okay, so I I, I just want to say um, I thank you again. And, and what I was what I was going to say is I appreciate you spending the time. I appreciate we appreciate at FDA um, the the rigor of the regulatory pathway, and we're trying to do what we can to reduce regulatory burden. And so I, this is kind of the bottom line up front on my talk is that we are very committed to advancing the development of safe and effective cellular therapies to address unmet medical needs. And we're, we're trying to do that by encouraging people who are developing these uh, products to interact with us um, early on in development. We're trying to use all of our expedited development programs to help move these forward. Um, but as we've noted in the past, when people are potentially getting harmed by product, now, one of the issues with cellular therapies is that they're really an incredible diversity. I, I don't even have here the simplest cellular therapies on these this slide, like things like skin grafts, bone grafts, um, uh, uh, but uh, or uh, or uh, unmanipulated bone marrow, um, but. Um, when you start to think about what's in the pipeline, we have everything from bioengineered skin to bioengineered blood vessels where people have taken a scaffold and then placed cells on that and sometimes then made the, the end product decellularized even. Uh, we have things like uh, bioengineered simple organs now, things like the bioengineered bladder, which is in development. And then we have some very complicated therapies, which are cell-based therapies uh, uh, that are essentially deliver uh, what they can because they're genetically modified, like the chimeric antigen receptor T cells are also known as cell-based gene therapies. So it's a really large, uh, a large scope that we have to regulate um, under uh, this area. And um, the, the whole class of human cells, tissues, or cellular tissue-based products, or as we affectionately call them, HCTPs, um, our articles containing or, or consisting of human cells that are intended for implantation, transplantation, infusion, or transfer into a human recipient. That is a definition out of uh, the Code of Federal Regulations. I've already given you some examples, skin, cornea, or cellular-derived therapeutic products. And those include things like mesenchymal stem cells or stromal cells, um, regardless of where their origin is uh, uh, from a human. So the regulatory framework for biologics I put this up here just so that people see kind of how the hierarchy of our, our, our regulations and guidance comes. So obviously we're allowed to regulate these things because in the constitution there is the commerce clause. Um, the courts have interpreted the fact that uh, pretty much anything you do with a biologic that's a cell therapy ends up using things that will have crossed state lines. So if the biologic itself hasn't crossed state lines, the media or the pipettes that you used uh, or the culture dish probably did. So that's how we get to uh, come across and, uh, and have the authority to regulate here. Um, there are certain, uh, th then the constitution obviously allows Congress to make laws. Those laws are also known as statutes uh, that apply to biologics regulation include the Public Health Service Act. And I'm gonna tell you more about sections 351 and 361 in a moment and the Federal Food, Drug, and Cosmetic Act. But those laws and statutes are very high level. Um, they essentially kind of say, go forth and do good things. Um, in order for us to help people know what we actually should be doing in terms of like good manufacturing practices, um, what we expect uh, for uh, clinical uh, trials, we have our regulation and rules which are made by notice and comment rulemaking where uh, we, First, announce the intent to make a rule, then uh, put the rule out there, 
uh, and then get comment back, uh, incorporate responses to comments, uh, produce a document about how we've responded to the comments, and then make the final rule. And then because regulation and rules um, don't 